Okay, everyone, welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is the coordinator and preparator at Art Starts. Um, and joining us this week is Lily Cryan, our program uh, coordinator also at Art Starts. Um, as you can see here, my rig is all set up and we're ready to go and explore this week's theme. The, the setup that I have is that my phone um, and my ability locked in um, up high uh, so that you can see everything that I'm doing, but um, I can't actually see your chat. So that's where Lily comes in. So if you have any questions or comments while we're working today, um, feel free to leave a note in the chat, uh, make a comment, share what you're working on as well, and Lily will be there to respond to you in real time. I check out all, all the comments when we're all done um, the video, but that's, uh, that's how we make sure that we are available to you throughout Explorers. So this week, this is our first time um, in the, oh, here, I'm gonna count. How many weeks have we been doing this now? So we've done one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is our seventh series of uh, Art Starts Explorers, our province of place, or our online version of our Art Starts Explorers program. And this is the first week that I'm going to be exploring. I'm only going to dedicate one of our live workshops. And the reason that um, I'm going to do that is because starting next week, we are restarting our performance series, uh, Art Starts, on Saturdays. Um, that's the performance series that we do in partnership with Westminster Savings. So if you uh, have visited the gallery before or um, River Market in New Westminster, you may have checked out some of our really cool performances that we've had in the past. So usually what would happen is this the last weekend of the month, we would have one of our performers in um, to have a free performance, whether it was dance, whether it was reading, uh, whether it was a hands-on activity, but it was, uh, it was still on Saturdays um, and it was always the last Saturday or the last weekend of the month. But we had to take a break for that. Um, and so while we were taking a break, we were brainstorming about how we could bring back to an online audience. So while both our friends at River Market and our gallery space are not open to the public right now, we're now ready to restart our popular performance series here on Facebook Live because we've been practicing together with the Explorers program and we feel like we're ready. So next week, next Saturday at 11, we're going to uh, pause the Explorers program and we're going to debut our Art Starts on Seg Story Hour with Skim and Shay. So same time as Explore, Saturday at 11 a.m. So when you come next week, you'll see um, a little bit of a different setup, but we hope to see you next week. So I'm super, I'm super excited to see how this goes this week, because usually what happens is that I explore alongside with all of you um, for whatever theme we're going to be doing, but I have kind of two weeks to think about it. The first week I sit down, I kind of put everything out in front of us, and we kind of, we explore the theme and whatever comes up. But this week, um, all the ideas that I might have, I'm going to have to condense them down into one week. And so that's making me a little excited and nervous. And um, I don't know what to do with a place to start would be for us to review the three rules of Explore so that I can get in the same headspace, the same, um, uh, just remember those rules of creating that help us stay focused. And what are the three rules of Explorers? Number one, respect. So we practice respect and we want to respect ourselves. So I'm respecting myself by acknowledging that my headspace this week, I'm feeling a little bit rushed. Uh, I hope I'm going to be able to get all of the ideas that I have. And if I don't get them all out this week, that's okay. I can keep practicing after our stream is finished. I could share in the comments as well. Hey, okay. I'm allowed to be a little stressed out but I'm also allowed to check in with myself and remind myself it's okay if I don't get everything done. And in doing that, we can check in with each other. So if you are working today with guardians or siblings or teachers, um, check in with each other, ask how you're doing. Maybe they're nervous as well. Maybe they didn't have a great breakfast. Maybe they're fighting with their sibling. The, all those things we bring with us when we start creating and it's nice to be able to take a second and ask everybody around how they're doing. We want to respect our tools and we practice respect for our tools by cleaning them up, by putting them away when we're finished with them, 
And if we're gonna use them in a way that maybe they weren't intended, we wanna be really safe and slow and respectful while we're using those tools. And we also want to practice respect by respecting the land. And the way that uh, I practice respect out that I currently am hosting this workshop in my studio, which is on the stolen land of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish people. And I want to practice being the best guest I can while I'm working and creating. explorers is that nothing is for keeps so everything that we're making today is going to be taken apart and put away later this is a good thing if you're feeling really stressed out especially if you are feeling rushed or you think you've got to produce something really great in just the short amount of time that you've given yourself for art making and that's not what these explorer sessions are about that's not what art, practicing art is about so to make things a little less precious for us to not things we are going to take things from our recycling bin and we're going to keep that thing in mind, which is we're going to take it all apart when we're done. Nothing is for keeps. And then this last one that's really going to help me um, get as focused as everybody who's watching is that there are no expectations. So all those expectations that I have to be perfect in one week, one week, that's not important because we don't have those expectations. I can throw those out. Whatever happens as we explore together um, as creators and explorers is what's going to happen. And that's okay. That means all of the ideas are good, even the ones that I have later that aren't under the camera. And we can practice surprise. So it's okay if we go in one direction and abandon other ideas because we didn't know that was happening. And because we're open to it, we can take that path. We can go and try those things out. Well, I'm feeling much better now that we've reviewed all these rules and I'm ready for us to start exploring grids. So I'm gonna put these to the side here move my sandwich board and my mini host over to the side and let's get started exploring grids so what are grids that's right so my art board is already set up it's almost as if I've been building up to this week already to get started and use the grid which is my cutting mat that I put on top of my drafting table um, and what's great about this this mat that I have here is that because it's a, it's a cutting mat, it protects the surface underneath here, but also thing because I've already got these grid lines, this grid that helps me stay straight. So sure, when you're cutting, right, if the difference between cutting with a pair of scissors, which hilariously I didn't put out in front of me, but that's okay. I'm in my studio so I can just swivel and then pull down some scissors. So let's, let's look at the difference between cutting straight without a grid and then then using the grid. So we take a piece of paper and, and we can take any kind of piece of paper, right? We can take a recycled piece of paper. We don't have to take a new piece of paper and we can just see how straight of a line, how sharp a line we can get just by using our eyes, just by going slowly, just by using the spine of the scissors that we uh, we tap up against the side of the paper and get Now I've been cutting paper for a really long time. So that was, that's pretty darn straight, right? And we can check it right here on my grid. That's a pretty straight line here. I'm going to check the other side as well. Yep, that's a pretty straight line. So I did a good job just by using the scissors. But if I wanted to do a whole bunch of these really quickly, and I wanted them to be super perfect because when I put them together, mine is gonna shift, I can use this grid to mark out my page as I go along. And then I don't have to slowly do it with my scissors. I can just do it by following the line. And I'll leave that tape there. So I've, I've uh, measured it up against the side here. I'm going to use my pencil give me really straight lines and I don't care about the thickness I just want really straight lines to cut along Oof. I'm tape the end of my paper is sticky and there are other ways that you can use um, or that you can get straight lines out of a paper right because I'm exploring grids this week but I could also fold the paper right so once I've got one line using a grid I fold the paper and then if I want exactly that size, again, I can just 
draw a line here using this new line, right, with my fold here, and then I could do a new pencil mark. Or I could just fold the paper again at that part. And what's really cool about this is that we're actually making our own grid with the folded paper. You can't really see it because I've used this as cycling. So for this, because I want to make, I want you to see and try this at home, find a piece of paper and see what happens when you fold your paper in half because you want to have these equal sections, right? If you just keep folding, what happens to the paper? Yeah, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to just keep folding or dividing. And that's really what a grid is, right? It's a space and divided or cut up without using, without you having to use scissors and without separating them apart, it is, it is kind of a cut, right? If we look at this grid here, if this is a square, right? Actually, this is a square, but then we would put these four together, right? And then if we put all of these squares together, this is a square. And so if this is our square here, and here I'm gonna mark it so it's really clear on the grid. go and then maybe one more so there's my square and so this square is made up of other squares how many squares are here one two three four five six seven eight nine squares so I have nine squares here if I was to take some of these squares out with my imagination right I can't cut these right now but if I was to take these out I'd be dividing I'd be cutting up the square and then I put all the squares back together again so the grid lines just allow me to divide or to mark up these spaces to show that this is the same size as this, this is the same size as this, these are all the same size. So if I use any of these kind of like rulers, then I know that I'm always going to get the same size. And so for the piece of paper that I have, because you might not have a cutting board at home or you might not even have a ruler handy this is a great way of being able to make a grid without having to have a ruler or a pencil or um, or even uh, grid paper, right? You can actually go out and buy paper that has grid marks already on it. So if you don't have that page, as many times as you can, keep folding it in half, right? You can see I took this one spine here and I brought it to the other spine there so that I could make it a half. Right. One half, one half makes one whole. Do the same thing on the other side. Just keep folding. Fold, fold, fold. Same thing in this inside here. I'm going to fold this to the crease that I had. And you can use any piece of paper, right? If you had a big piece of paper, if you have a small piece of paper, and remember, we've taken it from the recycling bin, so maybe it's not a perfect square or a perfect rectangle, and that's okay. Because by folding all of these spaces and making sure that the folds are the same, the consistent lines, they don't have to be perfect on the outside. It's just on the inside that we're trying to keep that sameness. And so now if we open that up, Now we've got all these lines, right? So everywhere where there was the fold, we've made our own grid going in this direction. So yeah, a grid is just a collection of these lines. So I want a grid though that goes in both directions. I don't want just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, rectangles. You fold your paper however you want, and I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna fold my paper this way. And then we can compare our pages. able to see it really clearly but if you're folding your page at home you should be able to start seeing these squares show up as you've been folding your page and just by just by folding the page without needing to go buy fancy paper without needing a cutting board that has a grid without going and finding a ruler and measuring out a page we've quickly made folding the page if you want it to be really really clear um, you can use your, your fingernails, and if you haven't been painting all week, your fingernails are probably much cleaner than mine. <laughs> Welcome to being an artist, always having a little bit of paint 
under your fingernails. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Hopefully we're all cleaning our hands really, really often right now though, uh, while we wanna be practicing um, safety and health. So I wash my hands all the time, but a little paint always seems to wanna stick behind and that's okay. All right, so I'm folding, I'm folding and folding again. And I'm just doing this just because I want the lines to be really, really clear. I know that the light above in my feed, you at home or in your classrooms, um, to be able to see the lines or see all of the marks, especially if they're not in uh, really dark, uh, dark marker. So there we go. So I've made a grid out of my piece of paper. And yours probably looks different than mine. You started with a different size paper. Maybe you started folding differently. Maybe you folded your squares. And that's cool. And we'll check that out a little bit later. But right now, I'm going to stick with this size. So to begin with, I'm going to emphasize, or I'm going to make it really, really obvious by filling in some of these squares, but not all of these squares, with a different color. And you can do the same thing. And it doesn't have to be in any kind of pattern, but it could be. Fill in whichever squares you want to do, but see if you can try and stay within those gridded lines. If you go over a little bit, that's no big deal. But see if you can stick what happens as we fill in some of the grids, some of the grid squares, and, and leave some of the other ones blank. okay right especially when you're going fast you could change colors if you're coloring with a crayon what happens if you use a pencil crayon? And if you're using a pencil crayon, what happens if you switch to a marker? And what happens if you press down really hard on some squares to color it in and some not so hard? Ooh, and did you notice when I was doing it on the side of the paper here that it was hard to color back and forth in this direction because the paper kept getting caught. What else could I do? I could go like this in this direction. Oh, it still gets caught. Mm, that's okay. Interesting. Okay, I do it over here. So now what happens when I try to color this one in? It was hard when this space right here. Now I've got it on this side and on this side. Let's see. Well, I'm definitely going over the edge. If you're not coloring on a mat, if you're not using a space that it's okay to color on, you can always grab another piece of paper. That's the other cool thing about using uh, recycled paper, right? We can grab a whole bunch of it from our recycling bin, put it underneath, and then we don't have to worry about if we color over onto the other space, right? Because it was all gonna go into the recycling anyways. The recycling bin is such a great place to find art materials. especially if we're washing our hands all the time, right? Go out there, grab some things from the recycling bin, wash your hands, making tools, put them back in the recycling bin, wash our hands, right? We wanna be safe. But yeah, the recycling bin has so many cool pieces of paper um, and different objects. And I'm gonna, I actually, I have another one that I got from the recycling bin that I'm excited to show you today. Okay, so I colored in a couple of pieces on my grid. And so you can kind of see it a little bit clearer, even if you can't see the shadows or where I folded on the page. I've got this really interesting grid. A different. Maybe you did yours in a pattern. Maybe by always skipping one of the lines, you always, you have a checkerboard that showed up. Or maybe you went all over the place so that it never actually touched each other. What do you notice when you did ones that didn't touch any around it versus ones that did touch each other? I like this one right here because what I notice is, is that it forms this interesting cross between these two shapes here, right? 
So it kind of used the spine, right? The edge, the spine, the outside of this one to do, to do an X. So just by coloring in this box and this box, I've got this whole other shape here. And then once I've got that shape, it's kind of easy to see, okay, well, while these two aren't connected to this one, these two spines share a common line. But by skipping this space here, I also notice, oh, this has a common spine here. And so by doing this practice, we start noticing things as we go along and look there and there, match those up. So even though these squares weren't connected by a drawing, by coloring, by however you uh, did your mark making, they do have these lines in common, right? They do have things in common and you can keep going. I noticed this one right here. Because I've outlined the rest of the lines of that box. Oh, there's this one down here. Which means there's this one over here. Which means this. And then this. I wonder if I even noticed them all. But even if you drew in the same squares as me, your grid was probably the same size or was a different size. You probably colored in a different color. Maybe the orientation of your page was different. So maybe you noticed different connections that I didn't even notice from when it was just a bunch of squares, right? And now we've made new squares. What happens if we color these in? And they're not all the same, right? So now we've got this rectangle here and this rectangle here. And if you could see the lines here, this, this line would usually make it two squares, but now it's one square. And you can count one, two, three squares here, but now it covers all three of those and two of these. So I'm gonna take a second, I'm gonna color these ones in as well. What do you notice as you color in the different shapes that you didn't color in at the beginning? And then one more. I think I need some. I, think I need some. Pink. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's kind of a pinky purple, but it still looks different than the other red and orange. Oh no! Remember how I was having a hard time on the spine? I'm gonna take my second piece of recycled paper though and put color over there. I think I want this to be darker because I want it to look different from the orange and red colors I use. There we go. I'm gonna go over it again. I'm holding the paper down so it stays flat. I'm only going in this direction away so that the spine doesn't um, get in the way of my pencil crayon this time. Okay. What does this look like to you? Does it look like anything in particular? I really want to keep coloring in some of these other lines. I just might. The thing that I noticed though was I have a blanket in my house that kind of looks like this. It's called a quilt and it's made up of a whole bunch of different shapes that somebody has sewn together. And when quilters are designing their quilts, right, even though they're using sewing, they're doing, they're doing an art practice as well. They have to, before they do anything else, they have to lay out and they have to plan all of their pieces because they want it all to fit together. And I'll show you why that's important. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to 
I'm going to just cut out this section. This section here that kind of looked like a quilt. And if you want to start cutting out some of the sections of your grid, you can. And that's okay. Of course, you could just cut out your pieces and then try and reassemble them to see if you could make a quilt out of yours, even if you don't have the same squares. Could you make a quilt out of yours? Okay, so because I didn't have to sew any of these things together, right, I just drew them all together, everything is very flat. All the seams or, or spines that I was talking about before, they all match up. Everything sits really nice and flat, like a blanket should, right? But now let's think about it. If you Have you ever tried sewing before? So have precise measurements, exact measurements. Measurements that look, that um, are, are perfect, really. The more perfect you can get with your sewing, the, uh, the easier it is to, to attach everything together. So we're really lucky if we're just using glue and paper we don't have to be always 100% perfect, especially um, exploring. But what happens if we were to get out a needle and thread and start practicing that? What would you find out? What would you notice? If you're old enough that your, uh, your guardian or whoever is responsible uh, for your or watching over you while you're doing your art making right now, if they feel that it is safe to use a needle and thread, you could totally grab a needle and thread and try sewing together pieces of paper or fabric if you have them. You'll notice there's a whole nother set of techniques involved in sewing that are different from everything else, different coloring in paper, from cooking, but it's, it's kind of the same thing as what we're doing here with our paper, with our collage. And if you uh, had been with us the last two weeks when we had been exploring collage, this idea of cutting things up and then pasting things together kind of has something in common with sewing where we're going to take all those pieces but instead of gluing them down onto a page we're going to sew them together. So what I was talking about was with this if I wanted to put these all back together I can just take these and I can just push them up beside each other and if it's not a hundred percent because we're just trying things out and it doesn't doesn't matter if it isn't perfect but if you were sewing this if you had decided you were going to be doing a blanket and you just cut out a bunch of random pieces and then went okay I'm just going to start sewing here and I'm going to sew here and just and just went for it let's see what could happen if we don't plan beforehand or if we don't even follow a grid properly or a hundred percent there we go remember these all fit together at the beginning these all used a grid Now between you and me, if somebody gave me a quilt that looked like this, I would probably be pretty cool about it. But if you think about it, here, let's, let's, draw, let's draw a picture of a person. Right, here's a head, and here's a body, and here are some legs, and then they're laying down, so I'm gonna put their arms to their side as well. And this body doesn't have any fingers, but they do have this body. And so if this body was gonna get underneath this quilt here, what would happen? Here, let's, let's relay it down again. All right, that's cool, right? Your face isn't covered, so you've got some room to breathe. And then cover your body. Yeah, okay, nice and warm. And I think this one went over here. Okay, and then where are the other ones? Oh, I can't quite remember. Okay, let's go right there. <laughs> Do you see that? It might be a problem. Oh no, my legs are gonna be so cold, even if we put this piece here, right? So generally what when we're making a quilt, we, we wanna have a rectangle, right? And so if you were planning a sew, imagine if this was a shirt. If we'd cut out a whole bunch of pieces to try to sew it together for a shirt, maybe one arm, Actually, I want to try that right now. <laughs> Let's see if we can make a shirt out of this. One arm might be really, really long. Here, there we go. There's a sleeve for one of them. 
And then, uh, okay, maybe this piece will be a little long down here. This is a cool looking shirt, right? And then the other sleeve. Oh no, this is the other sleeve isn't as long. Right? Can you imagine if people sewed using, uh, just using paper or without planning it beforehand or without measuring everything out? You probably end up having a lot of clothing like this. And well, a couple of pieces like this might be really interesting. In general, when um, tailors or people who sew um, are planning all this out, they're using a grid. They'll use a cutting board like this when they're cutting to make sure that everything is really very precise. They'll create patterns beforehand and they'll measure everything up. And then everything has to be cut really, really, really perfect so that you don't because they don't want air to get through or they want you to be able to be protected or they want it to last a really long time. And so grids are really important when we're doing things like um, planning and cutting when we want that kind of precision. Well, that was fun. I enjoyed using all these grid marks. I'm going to put this over to the side right now. And I want to make another grid because we know how to make a grid really, really fast, I'm gonna do the folding method again. But this time, when I'm done folding, I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna draw the lines really quickly so that we can, um, we can easily see them through the video camera. If you have some grid paper or you wanna make another grid, go ahead and start folding your piece of paper. You would have to fold. If you have, a, if you have a ruler and you just wanna start drawing lines on a page, that's cool too. start folding in this direction it's just it get the the folds get a little uh, hard to fold try it try it yourself and see what happens but um, I want my my lines to be a little bit more crisp so I'm gonna I'm gonna unfold from this direction because I know that that makes some some nice lines and these are really more guides right because I'm gonna draw on top of them afterwards so they don't have to be super super defined and cleared and um, unfolded lots and lots of times like we did for the other piece of paper this one I just want to be able to see some of the creases. There are so many words that I've been using this week, huh? Creases and spines and edges, lines, uh, what else? Equal measurements. And grids have so many applications. Remember when I said the word divide before? Well, divide is a math word, right? When you start learning um, some math that talks about taking away, so subtracting things in, so adding, and then there's multiply, uh, where you are taking a number and then you are making multiples or duplicates of something to make more. And then you have divide, which is to section there's another good grid word, section, to divide, to cut into pieces, into smaller pieces from an original whole. So it's all math. Really, art is math. If you, if you, start, um, if you start looking at a lot of different subjects, you'll see that um, art uses math and science. Music uses science and math. If you uh, are into if you become a tailor or you start doing fashion design, body measurements, you need to know biology so that you can understand the human body so that when you're designing things, you're doing it so that it works on a human body. So really, art and science is so connected. So a really good scientist can also be a really good artist, and a really good artist can also really enjoy and appreciate and use a lot of science. Okay, so I've folded this into grids, and I'm gonna take my marker now. Actually, I think my Sharpie might be too thick. So I'm going to take a pen. You could use a pencil. You could use a pencil crayon. You could use anything. I'm going to use a pen because I think that's going to come out really clearly. And I'm just going to start tracing, yay, tracing some of these fold lines. This actually ended up being a little bit harder because this light above is making a lot of shadows on my page. Well, that's okay. Just have to go a little slower. What do you notice? 
How does that affect your art making? Are you working outside? What happens when you try and draw a grid inside versus in a garage or at the playground? What about while you're wearing your mask? Do you notice anything, the difference between when you are wearing a mask and you try drawing a grid and when you're not wearing a mask? What if you just used your fingers from where you had folded and try to just feel out where the lines are? So don't use your eyes. Could you draw a grid just using your fingers on the folded paper? And even if you were the page for your grid versus looking at the page, do you think you could use a grid just by using your fingers? Try it out. Okay, so I've got my lines in that direction. And go in this direction. And if you have grid paper, you can just start with your grid. You don't have to go ahead and, and make a grid every single time. But there's something kind of relaxing. Remember how I said I was I was nervous at the beginning because I had these these actually these expectations. Before I reminded myself of the rules, I had this expectation that I was gonna have to tell you about so many things about grid good enough, and I hope we were gonna be able to explore enough. I hope it was going to be okay, and now I'm not really worried about it. Now just trying these different ways of making a grid, going really slowly, talking with you about these different ideas, thinking, thinking about different ways that we can make grids, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I hope you're feeling pretty good too. Okay. So that's probably a little bit clearer. You can probably see the grid a little bit clearer than when I had it all folded. And it's not 100% perfect. Even though I did the folds, this, these squares are a little bit bigger because I didn't know where the spine was. I wonder if you can see. It's not, it was pretty close, but there's a little bit of white that I can see over there and that's why it didn't end up being a perfect square. But it's pretty darn close. Okay, so if these were perfect squares, is, what are, what are things that uh, you're reminded of when you look at grid paper? Take a second and really look at your piece of paper. What do you notice? I'm thinking about, so rectangles stacked on top of each other. It kind of looks like a fence. If I was in a white room, maybe these are metal, metal, um, pieces of thin metal that have made a chain link fence, especially if I angle them this way, if, they're, if it's like a diamond on a diagonal. I'm gonna, make my, I'm gonna make my square again. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna use my viewfinder. Yay! Man, I love my viewfinder. So if you have, if you, this is your first week with us and you've never made a viewfinder, you can go back to our first week that we ever did um, Explores and we made a viewfinder. But a viewfinder really is just a rectangle. Um, just a piece of cardboard that you cut another rectangle in and it makes a frame so that you can focus on something without getting distracted by things all around you. And I love having a viewfinder all ready to go. Get to a viewfinder. There's so many things that happen and I'll show you a little bit later. Um, what we, I'll, Actually, I'll show you what, we'll, what we can do with grids next. But first, I just wanted to look at this um, and, and say, see when you put it on its side it does kind of give you that look of like a fence, right? Because fences usually, especially um, like the chicken wire, usually they're on a diagonal rather than um, uh, horizontal and vertical. Yay, viewfinders, I love it. What do I notice? Uh, maybe a net. So if it was a fishing net or just netting around a farm or a park to try and keep the deer out of eating all of the fresh buds off of trees. So take a second and just look at the grid by itself and what does it remind you of? Being able to draw a grid um, might actually give you something to draw in your picture. And now you know how to quickly and easily um, make a grid without having to have a ruler. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side for a second because I got really excited about bringing up my viewfinder and I wanted to talk about uh, grids in the viewfinder. So if you had a camera, you can turn on a grid mode with, with your phone, or if you had a DSLR, a digital camera, or a video camera, most of those can it. And the reason that they do that is just like when we take our viewfinder and we put it on a scene, it allows us to line everything up. 
So for this, what I've done is, is that if, let's pretend that this is my camera here, right? And I'm looking through my camera. Now, all of a sudden, everything that I place in the scene is going to be lined up based on these quadrants. And quadrant is just a fancy four. I've divided the space this way in two sections, right? Left and right. And I've divided the sections into upper and lower. And this is great because if you wanted to take a picture where you had a whole bunch of uh, things in there, you could ask, make sure that whoever you wanted in your scene was lined up, especially if you wanted them to be right in the center. And when we started exploring framing, we started exploring things like, well, if this is the object that we want everybody to focus on, then putting them right in the center makes sense. If we didn't really want uh, to focus on them, maybe we'd put them in a different quadrant. And if you start cutting out or drawing a bunch of different things and use your viewfinder on a grid, you can start to notice we take our object or our focus and we put it off to the side. Well, I mean, it looks pretty funny, but if we had another object here, we're kind of implying or saying or storytelling that this object is more important than this object that we didn't even bother getting into frame. We cut their head off. They're off, to, they're off in the on this one. And if we think about the cross here, right here, wouldn't it, wouldn't it stand to reason, wouldn't we guess that if this was actually in the center, center, that this is the most, most important thing. It's so important that both the upper and lower and left and right quadrant gave up some of its space just so you could pay attention to it. And so if you had a whole bunch of things in the space, you can see how the grid becomes really important because our eye generally wants to go right to the middle, especially if there's lots of information. The grid helps the eye, but also the person planning it, figure out where your attention should go first. Look at this for a second. Where did your eye immediately go? And if you're not sure, close your eyes and then open them again and look directly at it. What do you notice first? Well, I notice the yellow square. I notice the yellow square because it's, that's the only color, but also it's right in the center. It's the first thing I look at. And then my eye starts to go around and maybe it lingers here for a second or it stops here for a second because I'm laughing because this figure here got not only covered by all of these pieces, but also their head and their feet and one of their feet to this picture, to this final composition that they got stuffed off to the side and they're not even contained by the grid anymore. This becomes even clearer when you have a camera because what I had to do for here was I had to put, I had to put a whole bunch of things on top um, and I'm covering my grid. This is what I got excited about when I was in my, um, my recycling bin earlier was you might have heard me a few times talk about how um, you can find these plastic pieces from envelopes in the recycling bin. In general, um, most recycling plants need you to do recycle the paper. So you're not, you're, you're finding a, an art material, but you're also doing something great for uh, recycling. If you go and you find all of the envelopes um, in your recycling bin that still have the little plastic window, and then you either tear them out, here I'm gonna tear it out, we don't need to cut it, right? Especially if you don't wanna use scissors, you can just tear it out. And that right here, this is plastic. This is not supposed to go into the paper recycling, but it often does. So if you go pretty slowly, you should be able to pull the plastic off. Most of the cases, you can just rip it really, uh, really carefully around the outside and then just throw it into uh, plastic recycling. Um, but this time, so I wanna go pretty carefully. Oh, I'm getting a lot of paper this time. And that's okay, sometimes, sometimes I'm better at it than others. Sometimes the glue on the envelope is really, really, really sticky. Sometimes the plastic is really firm. If you get those big manila or those yellowy uh, brown envelopes and you pull the plastic off of it, sometimes it's really firm. And you can see here that the plastic, because mine is really floppy, it curls when I pulled it away from the paper. But check it out. We have this piece of plastic. And what does that mean? Threw it. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a grid to this piece of plastic. So I'm gonna take my, and if you have, if you have some tape, and I do, here, I'm swivel around in my studio again. I'm gonna grab some tape. And depending on how curly your plastic is, you probably, or you may not have to do this, but I'm gonna do this just so I can have my grid all lined up here. And if you don't have grid, that's okay. You can use the measurements on your ruler and, uh, and measure the plastic that you have so that, it, so that you know where you want your lines to go. So what I mean by that is um, I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna hold it up against the plastic. And I don't know if you can see because there's a whole bunch of paper here, but this is where the plastic ends here. And oh, the plastic there. There's where the plastic ends. And there's where the plastic ends on mine. So I'm gonna take my, my ruler and I'm gonna measure it out and it says that it is five centimeters. So if you're learning your math or you're with a, um, an adult or you have a calculator, what you can do is you can go five and I wanna go half of five, right? So what is, I can, uh, I know that it is 2.5, right? 2.5 plus 2.5 equals, so 5 and 5 makes 10, 1 is over there, and then 2 is 4 plus that one there is 5, and then I bring my decimal point down, 1. So I know that 2.5 is half of 5 centimeters. If you had a calculator, it could tell you that as well. So I'm going to look here, and I'm going to go, what's 2 and a half? 2 and a half is right there. And I'm going to bring my ruler to three different places along here, just so that when I draw my line, it's nice and straight. 2.5. Great. My line across it. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, so it looks like the edge of my plastic is behind this tape here. And then that's where the other side is. Okay, so it looks like this was oh, 13 and a half. 13 and a half. So I'm write 13.5. 13 is 6.5, and half of 0. 0.5 is 2.5. So I know that half of it is, whoops, is <laughs> 6. 6.75. And I'm just doing this quick because I'm doing the video here, but you could take a second and you could do the math um, a little more carefully and you could um, you could check um, using your calculator to make sure that that's right. So I'm going to go 6.75. 6.75 is right there. I'm going to do it three times again. Ooh, I hope that was right. <laughs> oh, I hope my math is right. Oh, it is. I'm sure it is. 6.75. There we go. And then I'm going to make my line. Oh, I went all over the place this time. It was not perfect. But because it's a recycled piece of plastic, it's not perfect. That's okay. So I could keep going. I could go half of 6.7. I could add half of 6.75 here so that I have another line here. But I'm okay with just the cross part right here because I just wanted to duplicate what I had seen when we had our four quadrants. So now I've got my grid here. And I could take my viewfinder and I could put my plastic right onto my viewfinder. And I'm going to add another uh, piece of tape just because I really want it to stick down. And you can see over here, I've actually, I've done this before. I've put some tape on top of my viewfinder. I use grids all the time and I don't take a picture unless I've got a grid turned on on my, my camera. It's, it's really important to be able to take a really um, a really well composed picture to, to have your grid ready. Okay, so now I've got my grid. Here, I'm going to bring my a white piece of paper so you can see it there and check it out. So now you've got your grid. So for this thing again, right, we, we had our, our, our picture here. There we go. That's what we're going to put and we're going to bring this over here and now all of a sudden we can see on top, laid on top of this composition, where that midpoint is. 
And maybe when you are using your camera, you're gonna to wanna to take your camera and you're gonna go, no, I actually want that rectangle to be right in the center, so I'm gonna shift my camera down. Or, nope, I actually want this body, this, this, uh, this figure over here that I drew to be in the camera over here. And so grids allow us to compose or to uh, make plans and decide before we even start drawing or before we start pasting down pictures or before um, we take our picture or, or our video to make sure that everything is where we want it to be in the scene and it becomes a storytelling tool for us to be able to tell the audience, the person who's looking at the picture, the person who's um, watching the video, that the most important thing is the thing that we have put right in the center or the thing that we want you to be suspicious of or to be watching because they're being sneaky is probably over here because they're never at the focus and if we're really smart we know that in the limelight they don't want everybody to look at them because then they can't do their mischief and so if we're following whoever is going to be mischievous or we're trying to figure out who the villain is where they are on the screen if you're watching your favorite TV show, if they're always off to the side, chances are they're probably not a super honest person. Or maybe they really, 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 really want to be in that main place. So even where they're, they, they sit in a show or on a, on a picture or when you're drawing them, you can, you can convey, you can tell a story just by where you put them. And the grid can help you figure out where to put them in relation to things. Okay, so we've looked at the relationships between a grid. One last thing before we go for our last, our last five minutes as we explore grids together. But as I said at the beginning, if you wanna keep exploring grids throughout the day today, um, throughout the week, and you have other things that you wanna share with us, I would love to hear about it. And you can always come back to our videos, which are archived both on Facebook and YouTube but also on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online. And you can tell us all about the things that you are making with your, uh, your family, your foster home, your uh, classroom, whoever you are making. But we do want you to get permission from an adult before you post anything with us. Okay, so in the last five minutes of my workshop, you might have noticed if you tuned in at the beginning of this workshop, that what I did was I counted down because I always start the video five minutes early just to make sure that my camera is set up right and that the internet is working. Um, and so what I did was I created this grid. And then what I did was when I was counting down, I said, we start in four, three, two, one minutes. When it was ready to go, what I did was I colored in the grid to make the letter. And I used half grid here, right? I only colored in this part of the grid and I used a half grid on a diagonal up here to kind of imply a circle and then down here. But I wanted everything to be pretty straight lines and that's, and that's something that grids do. They, they make it easy for you to keep a, a straight line. They also are great for helping you uh, trace or to get focused on just one part of a picture. Oh, there's so many things I could tell you about grids. And ask me questions too. If you think of uh, questions during the week, um, during the month or whenever you watch this video that you wanna ask me about grids, I would love to talk to you about it. Okay, so you'll notice that what I did, I'm just making this really dark for emphasis because I noticed that the orange isn't really clear. Do you notice that I've written you a message? G, okay, G, oh, right? because I wanted at um, uh, 11 o'clock to say, let's go. And so the reason I wanted to point this out was not only does this help uh, if you are learning your letters or you want to try and figure out how to draw something to be able to put a grid on it and then break it into smaller pieces so that you can start noticing shapes to make it easier to draw. This is also how uh, computers are called pixels. And pixels are a grid that if you imagine Imagine your computer screen has a, has a grid, but the grid is so small. So just like you can see how my grid here has these big squares here, and that this grid has this size of, uh, of squares. And then 
did my other grid that I drew, was it even smaller? I don't think so. So you, but you could keep going, right? If we wanted to make, pretend that this was our piece of paper and then we wanted to break it into a grid and make it even smaller. So now we've got a new grid. Oh, there we go. But now I want us to go even smaller. I want us to take one of these right here. And then I'm gonna make a grid. And then eventually my pencil crayons and pencils can make a small enough line that we can see the pieces in between. But the computer has the ability to make a grid that's even, 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 even smaller than that. And so if you get really, really close and you scroll into a picture, then you might be able to eventually get it so that you can see all the little squares that make up the picture when you use a computer. And it's not always perfect, right? They, they do have these straight lines. They have, they, they have to work in these boxes. They can't just have these curves. A curve like this or a curve like in the, the G right here, this curve over the more like this. In fact, it would probably look something like this square and this square filled in to make the curve, right? So you can see here if I went like this, color on top. Do you see how this kind of implies a curve here? So the last part of my exploring is to encourage you that if you're sitting in front of a computer and you have the ability to scroll, and usually you can just take your mouse and you can scroll in, but maybe you have a tablet and you can use your fingers to pinch, you scroll into an image as close, as close, as close, as close as you can get, and really check out all the pixels, the little dots in between, and you can see how your pictures are made up online and how it's different from when you draw them on a piece of paper. Well, that was grids. Like, I had so much fun. I still have lots and lots and lots of ideas. So um, if you have any uh, questions or you want to talk to me about it during the week, please feel free to comment um, in, um, on Facebook or send us a message. And who knows, maybe grids will come back again uh, another time. So before I go, um, I want to remind you the next Saturday at 11 a.m. we're going to have Drag Story Hour with Skim and Shay. It's going to be a little bit of a different setup on our side, but it's the exact same thing for you. You just need to show up at 11 a.m. Um, on Facebook Live and click the link when we go. And then I will be back to it again um, the first week of August with a new Explorers theme. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks and um, I hope you enjoy the Drag Story Hour next week with Skim and Shay. So from Lily and I, thank you so much for being here with us this week. I'm gonna leave the video on for another four minutes while I clean up because we always wanna finish our explorers with cleaning up and give you a chance to leave any final comments. Thanks so much and I'll see you in two weeks.